Hey, Jason with Hermetheus Coffee here and Artisan Roaster Software users of the world. Christmas is coming early. Artisan Software has just released version 2.8.2 and you might just think oh, it's a .2 release, so it's just bug fixes and stuff. No, this is a big deal. And in today's video, I want to go over my top three favorite features of Artisan 2.8.2. Now, before we get into things, uh, if you are a roaster or an artisan user, uh, could you just do the like and subscribe thing? Because that helps motivate me to create more content like this. All right. So let's get into the release notes of Artisan 2.8.2. Two of my three favorite things I'm just going to talk about because I haven't actually used them. I'm just excited about the prospect of what they do. But then the last one that I'm going to show, the game changer. Yeah, you have to see it to believe it because it's a really, really big improvement. Uh, now, the they've added support for roasters, civets, and Santoker. I don't use those roasters, so that doesn't mean anything to me. But obviously, if you have one of those roasters, that's a really big deal. But again, I, I'm kind of a data guy. So I have the roaster co-pilot. I use PID. So if it's kind of data or PID related, I get a little bit excited about that. So the very first thing that caught my eye here is the support for the Yocto Watt module. The Yocto Watt module is just a little Swiss made electronic board that can measure um, amperage, voltage, wattage, and now it can feed all of that electrical data into Artisan software. And that means that you can be graphing your amperage and your wattage and your, your voltage right on screen along with your, your temperature probes. You might not think that's a very big deal, but if you are on an electric roaster like I am, your electrical characteristics are actually a really important piece of data. I use an ammeter on the front of my roaster, and now that is a critical piece of data that I use. So the very first thing I do when I roast now, I look at my ammeter and I see what my line voltage is, and that tells me how many pounds of coffee I can roast at one time. And I think it would be great to be able to graph uh, the voltage and the wattage characteristics in real time along with uh, my, my coffee roast. Now, the one caveat, the one drawback about the Yocto Watt, uh, I have the Artisan XE 10 pound roaster. It's a 10 kilowatt roaster. Um, the Yocto Watt can only support up to 16 amps of current, which isn't even in the ballpark for most large electric roasters. But it's okay. We can still use it. We just, we're going to have to use a current transformer, these little donut shaped. Uh, transformers and we'll actually plug the transformer into the Yocto Watt and then we'll run one of our power wires through that. So we're kind of stepping the current down and then we'll use software to, to get things right. Um, I'm going to do this because I'm crazy excited about it. So I'll probably end up making another video on how to do that. Uh, just know the prospect is exciting. It's not quite plug and play, but we'll, we'll figure out how to do it together. All right. The very next thing that caught my eye here it says, add extra device channels as PID sources to the Artisan internal software PID. What the heck does that mean? Oh, it means a lot. It's really, really exciting here. Try to follow me on this one. So when we use PID, uh, we use a temperature probe that is stuck into our bean mass, and that feeds the software the temperature of our beans. And then the software will adjust the heat accordingly. So if we're not hot enough, it'll increase the heat. If we're too hot, it'll decrease the heat. But here's the problem. We only get one temperature probe. And so the diameter of probe that we choose is a bit of a compromise. So the, the thinner the probe you use, the faster it will react to changes in temperature, which you would usually say is a good thing. But if you go too small, it can actually be too responsive and it can cause the, the PID to go a little bit haywire and be kind of finicky to tune. Uh, so if you go to a larger diameter probe, it'll kind of smooth out your temperature curves, but they're a little bit slow to respond to things. So imagine this. So and, and this feature is what has me so excited. Now we can add a second bean temperature probe into our hopper. And now using software, we can create an average of the two physical devices and then Artisan will see that as a single virtual device. And we can now use that virtual temperature device as the input to our PID. And that means we don't have to make compromises anymore. We can add a second 
bean temperature probe of a different diameter in a different place in our bean hopper. And then using software, we can tell Artisan software, which one of these two probes gets the, the more weight? Is it a 50-50 average? Or am I going to give maybe 80% of this weight to the thicker one and 20% of the weight to the thinner one? Guys, you have a ton of control now. And so if I have two different size probes in two different places and I can configure it in software and use it as the input to my PID, my head almost explodes because that's a crazy amount of configuration and power that's at my fingertips. I can't wait to dive into this one. Um, and I already know that the, the creators of, of, of Artisan uh, are, have kind of the same belief that I do that uh, an ideal scenario would be an array of temperature sensors, more than two. So I hope that maybe someday that's that's where we're working to where we can have a, an entire array of temperature sensors. And uh, oh man, that just lights me up. But hey, this is a fantastic first start. That is my second favorite feature. The third feature is the big one. And we're gonna show this one in person because if you use Artisan Designer to create background profiles, you know how it makes you wanna pull your hair out because it's so buggy and, and well, not buggy, buggy is probably not the right word, but it's slow and it's laggy and it doesn't want to click. I've made videos on how to create background roast profiles using Artisan. I have to edit out a lot of the frustration that I experience while I'm in that designer mode. And yet something still sneak in like this part of the video. You can click and drag and move around these dots. It's very finicky. Sometimes you have to grab this dot two or three times before it actually wants to move. And so now if I can click and drag this little guy slightly up, come on Artisan, move it slightly up. So after I made my last video on how to create background roast profiles in Artisan, um, Marco Luther, the, the head designer for Artisan in, in Germany, emailed me and said that my video depressed him, which isn't a nice thing, but it did motivate him to, as he put it, give the designer some love. And so what you see on screen now is the result of that. And it really does address the biggest headache with the old Artisan designer, which was really the inability to grab these dots, they used to be impossible to, to actually grab and move. And now the ability to grab and move these dots is greatly improved. You can just kind of go from dot to dot and every single dot, um, it just, it grabs the way you would expect it to. When you click a mouse, it actually grabs it and it moves it and it's, it's fairly fluid. This might look a little bit jerky on my computer, but it's not a very powerful computer. It's just a little passively cooled um, i5 computer, several years old, and I'm running a screen recording software in, uh, in high resolution. So um, when I'm not running my screen recording software, this is actually a much more fluid uh, experience in using Designer. This is a game changer. In my last video, I said, don't even try to drag these dots, you know, right click the dots and go to config and try to use this table when possible. But that only works if, you, if you're if you using the built-in dots. If you ever have to add a point on there, uh, you pretty much have to click and drag. And now um, even doing that is, uh, it, it's a joy to do. And so um, this is, uh, this is the biggest uh, joy that I found in Artisan uh, 2.8.2. I hope you guys uh, also agree that these are great features. If there's something else that I've missed that maybe excites you, uh, please let me do, uh, know down in the comments. And then the last thing that I want to say uh, is that while Artisan is free software, it's open source software, um, it cannot continue to exist without all of our support. So if you're a user of Artisan software, donate to that doggone organization because they're doing amazing things. I think it's really cool that, that Marco proactively reached out and, and saw something that he didn't like and then did something about that. And in the course of doing that, it actually did introduce some bugs. I was uh, kind of working with the pre-release builds and they got roaster Dave Baxter on the on the West Coast of the United States involved. Um, he helped squash some of the Windows bugs that we, um, that we uh, encountered. So this wasn't a trivial effort and the artisan team just kind of came together to, to make this. And as you saw in the release notes, a whole other slew of other improvements. Guys, those things can't happen if we don't all support this uh, this effort. So, so please, if you've got anything extra to donate, um, hop on, do that now. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon.